he would literally say in that video, I don't care about anything. I'm an open book. And then continue to skirt around the <laughs> questions. I'm like, dude, this is like blatantly obvious what's so going on So that is here. psychotic behavior. Yeah. Like yeah. that is very indicative of somebody who has gone through a drug psychosis with lingering mental instabilities, uh, such as a family history of schizophrenia. But we'll get into my prognosis later. <laughs> Welcome to the Psych Substance Podcast. I am here with Derek from More Plates, More Dates. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, we've been talking for about an hour already, but we're ready to uh, get into this Connor Murphy debacle pretty uh, quick here. Apparently, he is ready to... I don't actually know. I have it loaded up here, and he has uh, just been fresh out of the institution for going clinically insane, perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. We're about to find out. But, um, so you know more about this than I do. Yeah, you've been following this guy much longer. Why have you been following him for so long? Is my question. Um, so he is a OG fitness YouTuber okay. who's been posting viral videos about his physique for a while. And to be honest, he's kind of known as he probably has one of the biggest fitness channels, if you can call it that. Where mm -hmm. it's basically it's more of like a hybrid of pranking slash slash fitness. I yeah, guess he did these Omega videos. That's what I've seen. Yeah. Where he would it's like a random chat, right? I've never yeah. used it. And then he would be topless and that was yeah. the whole video. Yeah, like, so Hey, look at my abs. Yeah. So that's a, a really popular go-to for, you know, the shredded guys is just go on Omegle and pretend you're this, uh, you know, unassuming person and then peel off the tarp and, Oh, look at me. I'm shredded. Oh, so we do like a Clark Kent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And coincidentally, he sort of looks like that too. So it works in his favor, mm. but he did these other ones where he would go up to girls on, uh, sixth street i think it is in austin texas okay. where it's like you know very popular um nightlife spot and he would do these it's not like pranks but he would do you know ask them questions do you know weird uh i don't know put the interesting scenarios that would all eventually end up with his shirt off essentially and those videos blew up how did he transition to this he just, he just be he just started randomly doing start it. taking yeah, his shirt off yeah so he did he ever take the pants off too <laughs> um <laughs> maybe i don't i don't remember it was usually the shirt yeah but um yeah literally he started on youtube and from day one he just uh -huh. blew up immediately doing these uh, shirtless reveal videos so this is good because we're getting like not everyone watching maybe knows about him so you're giving us a backstory yeah yeah so he basically he had you would think objectively he had everything going for him you know he's uh the super popular youtuber he has 2.43 million subscribers he got you know tons of views too slanted bro is it yeah, so you can actually just put it like straight. Oh, uh, like this? Yeah, that works good. As long as it's pointed at your mouth, you're good. You can play with it all you like. You would think I know this shit, being <laughs> doing YouTube stuff. But um, so anyways, yeah, he uh, did the fitness thing for a while, and then he sort of transitioned into, I don't know, I guess he went on an ayahuasca trip with, I don't know if it was his friends or he thought it would somehow benefit him in some uh, you know, spirituality So this context. is how it's relevant to me. We're, yeah. We're pulling yeah. it in. All right. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting how the fitness thing sort of like, developed into this hybrid of psychedelic stuff <laughs> but he went on this uh trip of enlightenment where he feels it was a success apparently whereas most other individuals do not seem to think that's the case because he is totally different to the point where his personality is nearly unrecognizable so all he but was his personality good to begin with i like who might say it was question. bad i don't know if it was bad <laughs> i just think that uh he definitely was uh I guess the traditional like egomaniac kind of guy, I guess, to begin with, because he literally did everything based on his looks, his popularity, et cetera. Like it was well, a this whole YouTube was based on his looks. It's literally just look at me. Yeah, exactly. So that I don't know. Essentially, he went into this thing with what I assume to be not the right headspace and ended up totally shifting his brain chemistry in some drastic aspect, I would mm -hmm. assume. And now. He thinks he's God is one thing. Okay. So he thinks he's like, I don't know. He would, When he started, it wasn't that. It seemed a bit more harmless other than the fact that he had one video which really freaked people out where he was pretending he was acting, but he was bringing his friends onto his channel and his family and trying to enlighten them. And he would just explain all these you know, obscure topics. Would he and, feed them drugs? No, he would just talk to them and mm. talk to them about spirituality stuff and, you know, sort of like, the conversation was very looping in that he would just talk about mumbo jumbo for about an hour 
and then get annoyed when they weren't enlightened like him. So <laughs> he became well, to the bunny ears enlightened via drugs, yeah. but he got so arrogant he thought that he could bypass the drugs and enlighten people just with his speech. That's it, I saw, find that very strange. Maybe I'm missing a. All the con some of the context on no, that. That's probably I what happened. That's largely what, what happens with these yeah. guys. Yeah. So that's what it seemed. Because even his one video, it was failing to enlighten my parents. And they were visibly worried about the situation, even though he claims it's just an, it's just an experiment. This is like an acting reel to show, um, I don't know, directors and stuff. To so a some part of him knows that people are going to think he's nuts. Yeah. Otherwise, he wouldn't preface it with... Uh, yeah, he also didn't want it to get banned off YouTube or demonetized or whatever, so he would preface it, sort of like a medical disclaimer. Mm. By the way, I'm not actually insane. This is just for, uh, you know, entertainment, blah, blah, blah. Right. But anyway, so he failed to enlighten his parents, failed to enlighten his friends. Without drugs, though. After his experience and without drugs, yes. And well, he that, failed to enlighten them without drugs. See, usually when you go about enlightening somebody, you want to take them on the same journey that you just went on. So I find it it's also telling of his character that he naively believed or he arrogantly believed that he could just talk someone into enlightenment. Like yeah. you would ask him, were you talked into enlightenment? Like at least take them on the same trip you went on figuratively and, and like actually the trip. Yeah. If he took a trip to, where did he take a trip to? Did he go to Peru? I don't know exactly where he went or who he went or with. Or did he just do it with in some L.A. dude's basement? Like, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Now, I, okay, I don't actually know that where he went or whatever. I just think that the context of the environment he was in, whatever headspace he went into it with, mm -hmm. was obviously suboptimal relative to what most people's experiences are. But it still netted the same end result. He became enlightened. Yeah. So he had this one video where he was basically visibly distraught, crying his eyes out and saying he's no one understands, you know, uh, they're going to understand, though, basically when I kill myself. And he basically says he basically lays out like a hypothetical deadline where he's going to be killing himself in his shower or his bathtub or something like that. And then mm -hmm. the police show up. He's not there. He's ran away from home, even though he lives by himself. He's not home. He can't be found. Um, they go find him on the beach somewhere and he's, uh, his whole plan, he's trying to like replicate what Jesus did in the Bible or something. I was actually going to ask that. Yeah. I was going to say, is he going to rise again? Yeah. So his whole okay. thing is sort of about like following like, uh, basically the timeline of what Jesus did. And then every time something happens, that's sort of relevant to that. He says, see, it was part of the plan. So by Jesus, you mean his past life as Jesus? Yeah, exactly. Is that what he believes? Um, I don't actually know what the fuck he believes, to be honest, but uh, I think he definitely thinks he is like the all powerful whatever. So my question is, before we continue, how do you know, like you just said, you don't know what he believes. So are you fairly confident that these beliefs are are not just rising out of, uh, I don't know, some kind of publicity stunt? Like, how do you know he just doesn't want to get more views out of this? Maybe he was bored with what he was doing. Like, there's so many angles. He's bored. He thinks this is going to get him more popularity. I mean, it's definitely got more people talking about him. Yeah, so that's... How do you know that's not playing a uh, part? That's some people's logic. They think, why are you giving this guy attention? He's just doing it for views. And, like, obviously, his channel was dying, so that's why he did it. And I'm thinking... Nobody would ruin their credibility like that to just score views. Because even if you're getting the views off of some big eventful, you know, faking your death, for example, yeah. everyone knows that you didn't do it once you show up alive and everyone thinks you are clinically insane, no, essentially. No, not the death thing. I mean, like, maybe he's acting enlightened and he's doing all these videos for views. I don't think that's the case. I'm just, no, but I'm just saying, like, there's people who are going to think that. Yeah, I think the... Uh, yeah, there's definitely people who think that for sure. I don't think that he necessarily is doing it just for views. Well, when you though. see how, how he behaves, then it becomes apparent that it's not just for views. Yeah. Like, he legitimately looks like he's lost all the marbles. Yeah, he knows this isn't... There's no way he would not be cognizant of the fact, if he was in a good state of mind, that this mm -hmm. is not tanking his like reputability or its credibility necessarily. Yeah. So even if it was for views, it would be like a sporadic bump, but... It doesn't actually help your brand. Well, yeah, and ultimately it's going to hurt you because yeah. he's going to. There's so many people who are going to find him completely not relatable at this point. Oh yeah, and everyone... I think that's largely why people on YouTube, like a huge driving factor in your popularity on YouTube, is how relatable are you? Yeah. And if you think you're Jesus, who's going to relate to that? 
Yeah, he's no. not going to get much following. His comment section is riddled with, I miss the old Connor and, you know, what happened to this? And uh, I remember when you inspired me to work out and now I'm like ashamed to watch your videos. Like shit like that. And okay. he doesn't seem to care at all. He says it's all part of his grandmaster plan. <laughs> and basically he ended up getting, um, you know, the cops found him, blah, blah, blah. He went to um, a mental, mental institution as far as I know. And then he basically is very good at turning on his normal ness when he's around people where he's trying to get out of the situation is he actually good at it though seems like when cops show up like he's live stream cops showing up to his house and him talking to them yeah. and he seems very aware he seems very he can come across as very normal and he will go on a tangent that is very uh how he would have sounded normally and say but can you tell when you've seen this that he's still not normal like is there still something that's a little off yeah there's like nuances but it's he's pretty good at acting okay. fine like for somebody who's never met him if you show up to a mental institution he acted the way he was you know people would think okay maybe he had a episode with drugs that went awry mm -hmm. but now it seems like he's you know has control of himself everything's kind of resolved so he's probably okay to go home and then right when he goes home he starts being like weird as fuck again yeah so that's kind of what happened. And then he gets out and he starts making these progressively interesting health claims in his videos, which are relatively harmless to begin with. It's he seemed tough. normal at that point, though. Seemed normal. Like he, he didn't like the, I saw a video that he did with this Kenny K.O. guy. And I know I'm going off topic a little bit where he looked absolutely insane. Like his eyes kept rolling to the side yeah. the whole time. But in these videos with these health claims, like he had a claim where he was uh Drinking other men's semen to get a testosterone boost, was yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, so the nerve growth factor component, the testosterone component, that kind of stuff from the semen, which at the end of the day, none of it is going to exert any kind of pharmacologic effect whatsoever. But he claimed that was basically me getting into this to begin with, is debunking those scientific claims in those videos because he mm -hmm. would make a lot of bold, unfounded claims, increasingly odd and increasingly strange, like to the point where, and they were all factually incorrect. Mm -hmm. So I was just kind of doing reaction videos, debunking them because he's a big, you know, name in the fitness industry and he's making all these scientific, you know, bold claims and none of them being uh, justified whatsoever. And then it gets to the point where he's literally talking about eating his own shit for health benefits. He's talking about drinking his own piss, eating other men's semen and justifying it in ways that like, frankly, just don't make sense. Even though yeah. he's trying to, he's trying to intertwine science into some sort of element of like naturalness. Like he thinks... I don't know. Everything he's trying to do is based around like the world has given you what you need with nature and, you know, drugs and big pharma equals bad and blah, blah, blah. And he's, I don't know, has a lot of his claims just basically made no sense. And he was getting progressively worse Nothing with it. makes sense about it because he's acting enlightened, but he's still lying, too. Yeah, that was the weird thing. And he like, would, he would even video... rebut my videos and say, I'm wrong after quoting a study that is literally showing he's incorrect. And then he, he had a video where he was supposedly was going to admit what steroids he used or what, not steroids, PEDs he used. That, yeah. And he, did he, I, I'm not sure, did he admit it? No, he still skirted around it, it which is. It seemed like he's still like, like when you're enlightened, you become an open book. Yeah. Like essentially you have nothing to hide. Exactly. How so, on earth is that enlightenment? Like Exactly. So a lot of the stuff he does is contradictory to his whole persona of I'm enlightened and I don't care about anything. He would literally say in that video, I don't care about anything. I'm an open book. And then continue to skirt around the <laughs> questions. And I'm like, dude, this is like blatantly obvious what's so going on So that is here. psychotic behavior. Yeah. Like yeah. that is very indicative of somebody who has gone through a drug psychosis with lingering mental instabilities, uh, such as a family history of schizophrenia. But we'll get into my prognosis later. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's one of the things, too, is because my original seeing this guy for the first time. A very prevalent thing in the fitness industry is guys who build their physiques on performance enhancing drugs. He looked great too. Yeah, looks awesome. And then lie about it and say they're natural to, you know, sometimes you have a justified reason perhaps, or at least you think it is. You don't want to influence the youth to pursue chasing your physique with, you know, exogenous hormones and whatnot. Or you just don't want people to downplay your hard work or, you know, whatever stigma is surrounded around your PED use. Mm -hmm. But in general, a lot of these guys will lie about their use. And with him in particular, I speculated that to be the case even years ago. And now it was just interesting after being coming enlightened, he was still dodging it like a motherfucker. <laughs> and I was like, dude, like at least I sort of called him out. And that was the only reason the video happened. I feel like is because I said, why are you this enlightened guy who still cares about mm -hmm. keeping this a secret? 
And then he's like, you know what? I'm going to tell you all this stuff. And then he talked about some very harmless, like introductory compounds, which most people wouldn't even consider really. So you think he never, he didn't, he actually didn't admit what he took. No. So he kind of, I think he, he did. downplayed it by saying, I took these light things as a way to hide the worst substances. Yeah. I think he probably took the light stuff too. No, of course. Yeah. But I think he definitely dabbled in some more, uh, exotic intense shit. So anyway, what do you there... think? What do you think he took? Um, to be honest, I think he probably took the basic kind of uh, go-to stuff, you know, probably exogenous testosterone, something like that. A very like introductory steroid. I can't imagine he really went that far out. His physique wasn't insane. He didn't make any drastic changes before and after. No kind trend of... baloney? No, <laughs> I have probably not, to be honest. I would imagine no, but that's because when he's, it's not like there's a lot of historical data to even reference in terms of he started his YouTube channel and he was already jacked. Yeah. So it's not like I can see it before and after of like, all of a sudden you jumped up this disproportionate amount. Mm -hmm. The interesting with, thing with him was he started out big and like perfect essentially in terms of what any guy would want to look like and then degraded quickly despite yeah. still being fitness oriented. Like he was still posting his shirtless videos, still working out. But he didn't look as good. No, he like blatantly lost maybe like five, 10 pounds of muscle, got yeah. a bit softer. And that's like exactly what you would expect from a guy who still looks great by all means. Like he looked good even as a natural, but he definitely, there was a big step down and his justification at the time skirting around it with ridiculous claims about it's lighting, I'm bulking this, that. And it's like, okay, why have you never looked as good as you did at, you know, 21? Has anyone ever asked him if you're so enlightened, then why are you still lying? Me. <laughs> you asked him that. Well, in my video, yeah, but that's <laughs> that's pretty much the only thing. So did he answer you? No, like he did his response videos, which were him in like a like a bandana with like a fucking shaman cloak on and talking about his uh you know beginner use or just skirting around it. Frankly, now was there any anything that hinted towards him cascading down so far in his earlier videos? Like, was there any kind of peeks into his a mental instability that just hadn't been exacerbated by drugs yet? Um, did, did he look like the kind of guy who would go insane if he tripped? Or if you were to, like, you know, take a stab, you would say he should be able to handle his compounds just fine? Um, that would be tough for me to say because I'm so inexperienced with psychedelics. But I would assume if um, like he seemed pretty, pretty, like, I don't know fine like, eccentric though yeah but that's the thing so if you go into this experience caring a lot about things like i don't know your inherent value based on how you look and things of that nature is that necessarily dictating that you're going to have a bad experience or is that going to be dictated by the guy who is guiding you or what exactly because that's a combination of, of yeah. a few things but did was he a very one-dimensional person i think a lot of people would say that yeah and i think his his whole thing was he was finding a lot of ep emptiness in what he was doing yeah because it's not like he's providing value he's providing like i guess you could say is entertaining but he was clearly not too happy with the fact that his videos all revolved around just like talking to girls getting girls being shirtless with girls that's it. Like you're not providing any harm reduction. You're not providing any uh, education. You're not providing any sort of information. You're not providing any value above and beyond. You take your shirt off and people like you because your shirt's off. So yeah, also a sign of an egotistical person though, because he, he wanted to be valued mm. with more than just his body. Like he wanted to gain that authoritarian view. Like he wanted people to look at him like, Oh, this guy is so knowledgeable. He's yeah. beautiful. He's knowledgeable. He wanted to be like the whole package. Like, I think so. Sounds like someone who's absolutely obsessed with himself. Yeah, that sounds uh, about right. Because it seems like a lot of what he was upset with before his like mental break the first time was before the whole I'm going to kill myself claim. Mm -hmm. He was saying how he's achieved everything. He has all this money. He has all this fame and none of it means anything. And he's unhappy. And it's all, you know, pointless and blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to do this. And then after that, he becomes enlightened. And all of a sudden, he has this newfound knowledge to spread and, uh, you know, spirituality to, you know, impart on the public. So he became a guru, essentially. Yeah, exactly. So he becomes a spiritual guru who is more multifaceted than just his body, which I guess is the ultimate goal for him, perhaps. Yeah. And then throughout that, you know, his increasingly bold health claims turned into him starting to just do like really weird shit where he was just micro dosing consistently the more recent scenario and 
I don't know what he's actually taking. His claim was taking ayahuasca every two hours, which I think you're going to be able to touch on if that's a realistic thing that you could even tolerate and or do and or what it seemed like he was on. I can try. Yeah. I don't but, know. That's kind of unheard of. Yeah. Like to me, it seemed kind of insane. And I don't even know anything about psychedelics. Everything about him seems kind of insane, though. Like it's that definitely too. on par with his, his current persona. Yeah. So it's interesting timing how we arrived at this podcast because literally today he had a video premiering called R.I.P. Connor Murphy and basically getting to the part where uh, for about a, maybe a week span, he was microdosing every single day and posting literally every half an hour to an hour on his Instagram and YouTube, these like clearly just under the influence videos that are so out there and make no sense, making claims about celebrities saying Robin Williams is alive and like he's somebody lied about his death and Jake Paul raped him and like all this weird shit. That makes no sense. It's just like out of nowhere. None of it makes any sense. Exactly. So he has all these bold claims in these videos and he has all this weird shit going on. He's giving out his credit card information. He's holding Zoom conferences with like that are public for all of his followers so to join. You're here trying to summarize, but there's so much. Yeah. So there's it so sounds much. like I'm rambling, and it, but I am because I'm just trying to sort of consolidate it into somewhat of a palatable amount of information. It's really hard because he's done a lot of crazy stuff in the past couple months here. So anyways, he's really out there. Yeah. And the police have visited him multiple times. And every time they show up, he, you know, turns it on and is like, this he turns is, on the act. Yeah. This is all for YouTube. And, you know, this is uh, nothing to worry about. This is all for uh, teaching some, you know, greater message and blah, blah, blah. And um, I guess they can't really arrest him for just being weird. So, yeah. so anyways. I mean, if they deem that he's a danger to others, then that's when they would put him in the mental yeah. hospital himself or others. Yeah. And they did, right? A yeah. So he ended up getting help as at least his, I don't know, that's what, uh, there's this girl named Jane who was staying with him and basically trying to make sure he was not harming himself or other people. She was kind okay. of just like babysitting him, I guess. And he so like a never ending trip sitter. Yeah, <laughs> he he actually proposed to her live, too, and said, we're getting married and blah, blah, blah. And um, anyways, obviously, you know, totally not happening. But she says he's, you know, becoming increasingly volatile in terms of his just actions and whatnot. And it's dangerous to be around him. And then the most recent update, his sister, Connor Murphy's sister, said he's getting help and he's uh in a presumably an institution again and like stop messaging messaging us about it because i guess people are harassing her about it which is understandable i guess considering he's uh you know literally like the center of the focus of the fitness industry interestingly enough for stuff non-fitness related entirely and now he's out of the institution supposedly better and then he posts i'm in this like weird private group with him that he put me in for some reason <laughs> where he's like he's posting private conversations to like his cult and i'm in it with like tiger woods and like disney world and like all these weird like accounts for no reason he has, he has a cult though yeah some of them are actually legitimately supportive of this and they're like he has risen again blah 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 and um what a weird situation yeah so in that group he says I have evolved and basically is coming out with his, I don't know, how can you become super physiologically enlightened? Like, I don't, I don't fucking know, but now he's even more so than before. And he has this video again, that's been ready to premiere that I had loaded up and I haven't watched it. You haven't watched it. It's only about 50. It's only 55 seconds. I figured we could react to it live. That is a short video. Yeah. And I don't know what it is, but I'll try and, uh, we can like overlay it, I guess. Can you just like move over here? Yeah, sure. 